Welcome to webinar number four. I am Dr. Julie Rodman. In this webinar, I'm going to discuss pathology involving the neurosensory retina, in particular, retinal vascular disease. You may recall this slide from previous webinars. The blue arrows are pointing to the neurosensory retina, the area that we will emphasize in this video. As you all know, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy represents the earliest stages of retinopathy caused by diabetes. Diabetes causes damage to the small blood vessels of the retina. Damage to these small blood vessels results in the findings that we are accustomed to seeing, including hemorrhages, cotton wool spots, exudates, and edema. This OCT shows a cotton wool spot. Remember that a cotton wool spot manifests as a result of a nerve fiber layer infarct. Thus, when you look at the OCT, you can see the hyperreflective area affecting the nerve fiber layer, thus manifesting as a cotton wool spot. Another common finding in non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is the formation of hard exudates. A retinal exudate is really a composition of lipid material that has leaked from damaged capillaries. Hard exudates appear as hyperreflective clusters in the retina, specifically at the outer plexiform layer. The blue arrow on the left side of the slide is pointing to a cluster of exudates. We also commonly see intraretinal hemorrhages and edema. The red arrow on the right is pointing at a hyporeflective space correlating with a serous pocket of fluid, again a result of leaking blood vessels. The orange arrow is pointing to an intraretinal hemorrhage. It's important to note that both exudates and hemorrhages will appear hyperreflective on the OCT. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by neovascularization or the formation of new retinal blood vessels arising from either the optic disc, retina, or both. Neovascularization on OCT can be seen as loops of hyperreflective blood vessels protruding into the retina. Here you can see what neovascularization elsewhere looks like on an OCT. Remember to look at the vitreo retinal interface since neovascularization will extend anteriorly off of the retina into the vitreous space. Remember that there are more significant sequelae that can result from neovascularization, which we will discuss in a further slide. Here you can see neovascularization of the disc. Similarly to neovascularization elsewhere, NVD can emerge from the optic nerve and extend into the vitreous cavity. OCT is very helpful in differentiating neovascularization from IRMA or intraretinal microvascular abnormalities because IRMA are intraretinal and are not visible on regular spectral domain OCT. NEO, on the contrary, is brilliantly illustrated on OCT as seen here. Remember that neovascularization arising from the optic nerve or retina can result in the formation of preretinal or vitreous hemorrhage. On the left-hand side of the slide, you can see what a preretinal hemorrhage looks like on OCT. Recall that blood will appear hyperreflective on OCT. So you can see the preretinal hemorrhage on this OCT appears as a pronounced area of hyperreflectivity within the vitreous. The small hyperreflective dots are blood suspended within the vitreous cavity. Neovascularization can also lead to tractional retinal detachments resulting in a separation of the neurosensory retina from the underlying RPE. The red arrow on the slide to the right is pointing to the neurosensory retina. The blue arrow is pointing to the RPE. You can see that there is a complete separation from the neurosensory retina to the underlying RPE. And in this particular case, the macula is involved, so we would call this a macula off retinal detachment. The other entity that we look for in diabetes is the presence of macular edema. OCT is being used on a routine basis in the diagnosis of DME. In fact, OCT is the single most important ancillary test in the management of DME. It not only helps us to confirm the presence of DME, but it also guides the treatment modality used by the retina specialist. I find it extremely useful in monitoring edema post-treatment. 
The classic clinical descriptions of DME include focal, diffuse, and cystoid or CME. And these we, do, we make based on clinical appearance. Focal leaking microaneurysms will lead to focal macular edema, which will appear as well-circumscribed areas of thickening on the OCT. Oftentimes, you will see hard exudates adjacent to the area of focal edema. On these OCT scans, you can see the hyporeflective areas that are very focal in nature, representing the diabetic macular edema. You might want to also take note of whether or not the diabetic macular edema is involving the fovea, or what we like to call center-involved diabetic macular edema. Center-involved DME has much more of a weak prognosis than non-center involving DME and requires urgent referral to the retina specialist. Diffuse macular edema is characterized by more widespread vascular abnormalities with larger areas of thickening, not as many hard exudates, but many more cystic changes within the retina, as you can see on both of these scans. On the left-hand side, you can see that there is also a subretinal or neurosensory detachment indicating the chronicity of the disease and the effect that it's having on the entire retina. On the right-hand side, you can see the diffuse involvement of the cystoid macular edema, again involving the fovea. Thus, this would be an urgent referral. CME associated with diabetic macular edema appears similar to CME from other causes. It results from a generalized breakdown of the inner blood retinal barrier with fluid accumulation, again, in the outer plexiform layer. On the OCT, you can see large cystic spaces. It's interesting to note that in cases of vascular occlusive disease, as you can see here, as a case of CRVO, the cystoid macular edema presents very similarly to how it presents in diabetic retinopathy. Thus, you really need to use the fundoscopic appearance alongside the OCT to determine the etiology of the cystoid macular edema. I hope that this webinar was useful in introducing the concept of diseases of the neurosensory retina, particularly in retinal vascular disease. I look forward to seeing you for future webinars on advanced OCT interpretation.